again. I'm sorry about that. This is my second time recording this video because uh, my my setup for my phone wasn't very good, so it fell over. Because usually when I'm recording videos, I would usually ask for help, but I have no one to help me at the moment, so and I have to use my iPhone. So yeah, you know. So, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm LAC Fries, and today I'll be showing you how to wear short order and your C ones, your dress uniform for the air cadet. It's basically the exact same for the army and now sea cadet because they were shirts just like these and they wear a tie now. So yeah. They discontinued the gun shirts for what re for what reasons I do not know. But I'm going to show you how to wear short order and then immediately after I'm going to show you how to wear full blues dress uniform. Mm -hmm. As I said, it works for both C and no, yeah, C and Army Cadet. So if you guys want to follow along, you can. Just learn a thing or two from me. First, dress shirt. You would always iron your dress shirt. Usually, I always do, but you don't have to, especially if you're you're wearing a you're going to be wearing your full blues. No one's going to really see underneath this. So, but for definitely a short order, you would always iron your shirt so it looks nice and flat. Of course, I didn't iron mine yet because I'm returning my uniform here soon as I told you from my last video but yeah um, when you put on your uniform you would always put the dress shirt on first you know make sure you have your epaulets and if you're wearing short order summer dress whatever you call it wear your name tag on the right side and if you have any medals you don't wear medals with short order but you would wear your ribbons which will go right here, and then I think at 0.5 centimeters above it would be your name tag. I think it, the name tag is also 0.5 centimeters for the how you would wear it, but I'm not completely sure like that. But so I just have, I usually just have my flat against the very top, make sure it's straight, and then after I put on my dress shirt, oh yeah, let's dress shirt button every single button with the exception of the top one. You don't button the top one if you're wearing a summer dress. Next, you would wear your your woolen socks. Sorry about that. About that. Uh, you wear your woolen socks with your uniform for each and every single one, even your FDUs, your winter dress, and things like that. You wear your woolen socks. And then you would put your pants on, make sure there's sharp creases front and back. Uh, make sure there's nothing in there in your pockets when you're on actual parade, and yeah. Um, and then you, with the belt, you would put your belt through this side and then you just wrap it around there, make sure you go under every single belt loop, don't miss one. And then you would put it in brass on brass, so it looks like this. Uh, see how that silver part is on the silver part? It's supposed to be like that. Sometimes, I think some kids get issued older belts that actually have the brass color, but... And it's the exact same with those, you would have your brass part on your brass part, but for us with silver on silver, but you still call brass on brass. And then, yeah, that's for the belt. And I'm going to show you how you put on the, the dress boot and how to lace it up, essentially. Um, from my last recording, I had one boot on, then my fellow fell over. I'm going to show you how to put your dress boots on, or your ankle boots, uh, whatever you call them in your cadet core. I call mine my ankle boots or parade boots work too. Over here, put the boot down. It's easier on that elevator surface. Uh, and then you just slip it on. Since my boots are a little tight, I always have to unlace them a little bit in order to put mine on. So, open up your pants and just put the boot on. There you go. Once you got the boot on, you're going to kind of lace it. You're going to pull your pants up like this. You don't know, you have to, but it makes it kind of, personally find it easier. And you put, you have the lace. You put one end through here. I'll do through here. The longer end would go through this side, shorter end goes like this. And with this, you go all the way up. You have a little bit on the top. You immediately go right to the top. And then, for this one, you would slip underneath here, put it up here, put it over there, 
and then a little P. I'm gonna show you here. Like on right here, you would put it through the loop like this. See how it goes in there, and it has a top effect. And then you would, with the other one, you would slip it right through there. And then you do this exact same thing. Until you get to this top one here. You notice know, so you have really nowhere to go when you get here. Besides one place, you would put your thing right through the loop here. You tighten it. Do a reef knot left over right, right over left. A few times. Get a good knot and then you tuck your laces in. Put your pants over. Usually you would hem your pants if they're long like mine. So that they fall on the, the third lace like so. But um, since I'm leaving, I usually, uh, I'm not going to empty pants, but when I move them to my index, get at four. If they're too long, like these ones, I'll, I'll make sure I'll definitely hem those. Make sure you get approval by seal before you go making alterations to your uniforms, like, to make them fit better, you know? A big note, what you want to avoid, when you're in uniform, you don't do anything that will, you know, Disrespect the cadets as a whole. So, no swearing, no doing weird actions like, I don't know, Michael Jackson moonwalking. And a big issue I always have don't put your hand in your pockets. The pockets are just there because they look nice. You have back pockets too, but you usually never put anything in your back pocket. And only occasionally would you actually put anything in your front pocket. But you don't put your hand in your front pocket. Now, if you want to wear full blue uniform, actually, there's one more piece. If you're wearing short order, you would wear your wedge. If you, you know, you should have a wedge. You put your wedge on your head like this, and then you make sure two finger lengths, two fingers from your eyebrows, so it doesn't. It sits nice in the middle. It's not back like this or too front like that. Though some of the newer cadets like having their addresses back farther than they should be. And your wedge should be leaning a little bit to the right too. So it should be three fingers from your ears and four fingers over here. Left side, four fingers. Three side, three side. Right side, three fingers. And you would wear your wedge like this. But if you're wearing, um, your full dress uniform, I'll show you how to wear that. First, you get your tie. Tie. This thing is very important in your kid cadet career because now everyone's wearing ties. The army cadets were always wearing ties, but now the sea cadets, I heard, we're also wearing ties now. So I think I'm sure. But you, when you're wearing your tie, you button the top button like that. And then you go pop the collar open like so and then you open it up or put it around here and then you either tie your tie well, it's got, there's plenty of videos on youtube to show you how to tie a tie so you can look at those if you need it but i always keep my tie pre-tied so you can tighten it like this make sure you cover up that top button and then when it's in place you pop your collar there like so there we go. You're now wearing your tie. You would, your tie would usually probably be longer than mine, but, you know. And then, the most important part, the tunic. The tunic is one of the most, no, I promise, in my last video I said it was the most important part, and I still believe your tunic is the most important part of your blue uniform. It shows everything you earned and got. Make sure you're tunic has a shoulder flash because now you could visit your supply and get some and then you sew them on and then you sew on your rank badge which will go down like so and you sew on any other badges you might have try when you're you usually don't iron your tunic but when you do try to not get an iron like crease in the middle here you want your things to be nice and flat instead of having a sharp crease in them or going over with an iron and accidentally ironing your badge not only ruining the badge, but also ruining the tunic, which is something you don't want to do because you return your uniform pieces when you're done. And if you put that 
do that, you would ruin the tunic and the bag, and that'd be unfortunate. I got put. I got to make sure you have the collar down. Let's start with the tunic. Make sure your bag, your your belt is flat in the back like this before you ever tighten your belt. I just make sure yeah, my belt's perfectly straight, like all belts should be. And then you button your tunic. Belt button every single button besides the very top one. So I'll show you here in a sec when I get my buttons buttoned, like so. There we go. Don't never button the top one. You never can just stay open. Uh, about these pockets, make sure you never have anything in your pockets. Always make sure your bu your pockets are closed. Your button pockets are closed like so. Now let me show you the hardest part about the tunic. This pesky tunic belt. What you want to start with is put the belt through this end and you pull it. As tight as you want, and make sure it's a comfortable fit, not too tight, and then you pull it through the other side. I remember when I first got my uniform, I just kind of put it through here and kind of kind of going over here, but you're supposed to put it right back through. And then you would put this right through here, nice and tight, and then you would. Here's the point for it. You would fold fold your belt like so, and then you. Pass it through here. Pass it through. There we go, like so. And it has this nice little effect. It's nice. It's uh, good looking. And then you could just move this wherever. Usually over there. And then you don't want any wrinkles in front. So what my trick is with Put your finger into the bow loop. You would pull them like so. Pull the middle one. And then you just kind of do that. So it's nice and flat in front. Make sure you, when you're done belting your belt, you align it up with the buttons in the middle. You don't want it like that. You want it like this. And if you have any medals, they will go on the right side. Real Canadian military medals go on the left side, but cadet medals aren't real military medals, so they go on the right side and not the left side. But if you have medals, you should know this. Um, ledge time. You do the exact same that you would do with short order dress. So you put your wedge on, two fingers, a little to the to the right, and you got your uniform on, and that's how you wear your uniform. Now, let's say you're on parade and it's a little chilly out, so you would wear your parka. You would wear your parka, but you don't wear winter dress with your blue uniform. You don't have your toque, you don't have your gloves. You would, if it's too cold, you would wear your parka. Like so, and uh, now last last video I forgot to mention something. Your parka is supposed to have epaulets on it. Obviously, I never I wore mine before I got promoted to AC. But you wear your epaulets on here, and you would have another one on here. But I don't. But I know this is not too much of an issue, especially with the lower ranks, if you don't wear your your things, your, uh, your epaulets on your thing. But I did it anyway. That was fine. But if you're, at least in LAC, you should probably wear a rank on your shoulder flashes. Shoulder flashes, your shoulder epaulets. As I said, this thing has two layers. You would usually never wear a parka on parade, but you wear before and after parade. To put it on, you would just put, put it over your tunic. Make sure you don't knock your, it might be easier if I 
Put my wedge down. Put your hands are here. Like so. With your blue uniform, I don't, you could, or maybe ask your CEO, I'm not sure about this, but I wouldn't really wear your liners, so I would only wear the exterior. But I know with the FTU, you can wear your liner. I remember I saw some of the Army cadets on the Remembrance Day parade wearing their liner on parade, which is a big no-no, but it was it was not even that cold that day. It was pretty hot. Personal thing. So button the button, then you zip up the zipper. I'm not going to button up all the buttons for my sake, but you know, make sure you have your thing, your patch centered and straight like that. You would usually keep your hands out of your pockets too, so you wouldn't go like that unless it's particularly cold, then you probably should ask your CEO if you're allowed to. Because you would usually not wear this, but this with that, but what's it in my hypothetical situation here, yeah. Put your wedge back on, and I'm, for my sake, I'm not going to put it on, no, I'm going to put it on correctly. There we go. And then you got parka with your blue uniform. And that, guys, is well, these gals, is how you wear your parka. Your parka with your blue uniform and your blue uniform in general. I hope you guys like that. I'll post another video of how to wear actual winter dress in the FTU. And I'll show you everything to do with that. I think the FTU is a harder uniform to wear overall. You have to do a, quite a lot of things, but yeah, that's my video. I hope you liked it. Be sure you you. I also touch my camera or something. I'm not forcing you to. You don't have to if you don't want to. But you know, I hope you liked it, and see you in the next video where I will be showing you how to wear the Cadet FTU and winter dress. See you later, guys.